got to keep expanding our horizons, especially we owe you guys as YouTube reviewers to not just stay in the perfumes that we're comfortable with. We have to expand and go out there and take risks, olfactory risks, because you guys deserve it. You guys to deserve to know about perfumes that I normally wouldn't wear or enjoy. Hi everybody, it's me again, Moody Boo, and I am back with a perfume review. A wonderful guy named Giles contacted me from Javago via email and said that he liked my channel. Thank you, that's really cool. <laughs> and asked if he could send me a bottle of the gift, La Cadeau. I think I'm saying that right. And I was like, well, <laughs> okay, I'm super nervous now. This makes me very uncomfortable. And here's why. As I explained to Giles, I appreciate having a free bottle of perfume. I really do. But I am going to be honest. And I am really uncomfortable with doing a negative perfume review. Now I can always find positive things to say about a perfume, but you guys are going to know if I like it or not. <laughs> I don't have a very good poker face. <laughs> so I explained all of this to Giles and he still wanted to send me the bottle. Now for one thing, huge points for being brave as hell because anybody sending me a free bottle of perfume with carte blanche to be able to say whatever I truly believe about it with no issues, that is bravery on a scale I haven't seen in a long time. <laughs> so kudos, Giles. Um, the other thing is I'm like, well, all right. Just like some of the other perfumes that I've reviewed, you take your chances. <laughs> so I did not purchase this bottle of perfume. So that's just out there right now. And thank you. Thank you to Javago. And thank you, Giles, for thinking of me and sending me a bottle. I think that's super generous, very magnanimous of you, and courageous. <laughs> so here it goes. Let's get to it. Let's start from the outside and work our way in, shall we? So the bottle. Okay. Can we talk about it a minute? Now, you know me, I love a pretty bottle, and I think this is lovely. And you know, Bulgari could take a lesson from Jivago on how to have a bottle with a pointy bottom. You send it with a stand, a pretty stand. This to me looks like this is an iceberg or something, and this is rising up through this, this iceberg. That's what this reminds me of. It's a beautiful bottle. The bottle is glass. The stand itself, I think, is plastic or feels like a really good quality. It might be ceramic. I don't know. I don't know stuff like that very well, but it's really nice. It seems good quality. And this fits in there. Loverly. It does take up a lot of space. You got to have some height. This is one of my tallest perfumes because of the stand, but I'm okay with that. <laughs> I really like the bottle. And now I'm exploring more of the house on my own because I would love to have a sister or a brother to sit it next to so that, you know me, symmetry. I'm all about symmetry, so I need to get another one. So there you go. Now, sprayer is wonderful. And I'll spray some more of this in a minute. But I want, I've been wearing it for a week, maybe a little more than a week and pretty much every day just to see how I truly feel about it. And the first time I sprayed this perfume, I was like, oh crap. <laughs> I don't like it. I don't like it. And I thought it's a bit white, musky, a hint screechy in that opening, that first opening. And I thought, oh, damn. oh man, this is really going to suck. This is going to be bad if I'm already disliking this perfume and I've just put it on. So I thought, well, you're going to work with it for quite some time because you told them that you would need at least a week or two to be able to really wear it before you uh, posted a video or recorded a video. And so I wanted to give it its fair shake and I wore it every day 
and I'm still wearing it. And here's the thing. <laughs> I still hate the top. I'm not going to lie. I don't like it. I don't like it. But that only lasts for about 20, 30 minutes. And then something interesting happens. So let me tell you the notes first. So um, I'm not going to go by Fragrantica. I went right to Jivago's website. And the notes are ylang ylang, peach, and basil on the top. The heart notes are rose, jasmine, lily of the valley. The base notes are white musk, amber, and vanilla. Now, as you will see in that pyramid breakdown, there's a few issues that I have. Peach is one, Lily of the Valley is another one, and White Musk. So I was very dubious whether I was ever going to like this perfume. And when that top hit and I was slapped in the face with that kind of screechy, white musky, peachy, Lily of the Valley soapy um, opening. Yeah. So worried. That's a word that describes what I was. <laughs> and then I worked with it more. So here's what happened. The three notes I can't stand are mostly at the top. The peach, the white musk, and the lily of the valley. That is where they are their most intense, their most concentrated. So of course, it's like, no, that is not my jam. But every day I worked with it and once it started drying down, it got a little sweeter, not a lot. It's a bit powdery. It's a bit clean. It's a bit fresh. It's a hint soapy, but not that hand soap soapy that I can't stand. More of a, a really clean shampoo kind of a soapy. And it warms up in the base to where it anchors all of those clean, airy, slightly powdery notes, those florals, the amber and the vanilla. This is super well blended. Let me tell you, it is exceptionally well blended. So I can't pick out one note, but at the same time, when I'm getting part of my sillage, when I'm smelling it, um, I go through a real journey with it. Because it, it sometimes I smell it, it smells warm, a little bit sweet and clean. And then another time I smell it, it smells a little fresh. It smells a little musky. So the more I worked with it and the more I understood it, the more I appreciate it, especially the mid and dry down. And I have pretty much been done testing up to about two days ago. And now I'm just wearing it for pleasure. I have nothing like it in my collection whatsoever because that's, that's not in my wheelhouse. This isn't a perfume that I would have chose a sample of to buy and smell because of that unholy trinity of notes that I can't stand. The peach, lily of the valley, and white musk. But the peach, I don't get a lot of it once it dries down. It just adds a hint of freshness. The lily of the valley, once it settles down, it adds this clean kind of a note. And that white musk, once it settles its ass down, it almost becomes more of a binder for the other notes. It kind of holds them all together. So the more I wore it, the more I was not only appreciating it, but suddenly I knew exactly where this perfume took me. And it takes me to a very hoity-toity, high society lady back in the 50s and 60s in her very luxurious boudoir. I can smell the clean linen on the bed. I can smell the makeup on her sitting table. 
I swear with that slight metallicness in there, I can even smell the mirror that's attached to her sitting table where she puts her makeup on. I can smell these rich velvet curtains. I swear, I, I am totally there. They're rich purple velvet drapes. There's a rich purple velvet matching bed covering with clean sheets underneath, clean pillowcases on the bed, and a couple of red velvet and purple velvet round fluffy pillows to sit on top of the made bed. The dressing table is a beautiful oak with a big round mirror and light circling it. And she's got her makeup and a couple of intimate perfumes. And next to it is her ensuite, her bathroom, where she's just gotten out of the shower and cleaned with a very fresh smelling soap. And all of those aromas are wafting into her boudoir. <laughs> that's what I get. Now, that's not normally a scene that does a darn thing for me. I like very weird, very niche, very bizarre perfumes. I don't usually go backwards in time with my perfume preferences. I go forwards into the new things, the weird things people are making out there, the very unique things that somebody 56 years ago never would have put into a perfume. <laughs> but I am, the older I get, almost the more that I appreciate history. It seems like when you're young, you look forward. When you're older, you start looking back. And that's kind of where I am. I still look forward a lot, but I'm starting to appreciate history more um, in fragrance and in the world. So I never thought that I would appreciate a perfume like this. I really didn't. But I am so proud of myself that I know that I can expand my mind and expand my nose to perfumes and experience perfumes that I normally wouldn't appreciate. And I'm very proud of myself. <laughs> because I appreciate this perfume very much. <laughs> and the sprayer is really good. It's fabulous. There's still a beautiful aerosolized mist in the air. It doesn't leave a bunch of streams. It's a nice even sheen on my skin, which I really appreciate. It makes a really good sound too. <laughs> and oh that bottle with the rose gold top and love this and the perfume i appreciate incredibly much i totally understand it as far as my perspective goes everybody may get a different mind scene whenever they smell it but this is the one that really came to me was the sophisticated lady in her very luxurious boudoir in the 50s and 60s you may get something else but now that I know I can handle, now peach, still off the table, but lily of the valley and white musk, I really avoid. And now I'm thinking maybe that's a mistake. Maybe I'm still limiting myself too much in too much of a perfume box. And I need to flip that lid open and experience every kind of perfume because like I said, this is not in my wheelhouse at all. No, and yet, <laughs> I'm super glad I have it. Performance is really good on it too. I mean, really good. I One of the nights I was testing it, I sprayed one spray, one only, on my arm. And that was like right after dinner, so it was probably 7, 7.30 at night. And I could totally smell it the next morning at about 7 in the morning. And it was projecting. It wasn't even a skin scent. So the performance on this is outstanding. The sillage is wonderful. So you have to be careful. I would do one spray with this. Seriously. I have done two sprays one of the days I was testing and it was too much. Because of that top that, top that I dislike, it seemed to last a little longer with two sprays. Where you don't need it for its longevity overall to have two sprays. One spray is plenty. 
Um, the perfume itself is right at the expensive level. It, it hits right about $200. And so, but a lot of their fares um, are less expensive than that. I think this is one of the more expensive perfumes they have in their arsenal. But this will last forever. I'm telling you, this stuff performs like crazy. It really does. This would be a perfume. Now, um, I don't know about wearing it to work because it's pretty intense. It, it, like I said, one spray, it projects really well. So that makes me think probably not daytime wear, maybe formal business nighttime would be a, an appropriate setting. Um, I also think very formal anything you could wear this, you could wear this to a wedding as a bride or somebody in the audience, absolutely. It's got that really sophisticated classiness to it. And it's also not something that is offensive to people. Cause you know, super sweet perfumes or super spicy or anything like that, um, they can really put people off. This just smells clean and fresh and a hint of makeup vibe in there, just a hint and some clean linen kind of smells. And like I said, that whole boudoir setting. And so it's not something that would offend anybody unless you oversprayed, then all bets are off. So I think you should check it out. I think if this is the kind of perfumes that you're into, you definitely should. If this isn't the kind of perfumes that you're into, but you call yourself a fraghead, you still should check it out. Fragheads, we have got to keep expanding our horizons, especially we owe you guys as YouTube reviewers to not just stay in the perfumes that we're comfortable with. We have to expand and go out there and take risks, olfactory risks, because you guys deserve it. You guys to deserve to know about perfumes that I normally wouldn't wear or enjoy. And I will tell you about perfumes I don't like as well. I'm gonna, I think I said before, I'm gonna start up my Sack of Septic Scents um, series again, because I do have a couple of perfumes that I don't care too much for, and I wanna talk about them. So anyway, thank you, Giles. I am privileged and honored that you sent me this perfume and I'm so dang grateful that I like it. Ah, I was so nervous. I was so scared. When I first did, I was like, oh no. Oh, please universe, no, please, please, no. <laughs> but now I really, really appreciate it. And again, that's The Gift, La Cadeau by Zhivago. I wonder if they named their perfume house after that movie, Dr. Zhivago. Oh, that was a good movie. I haven't watched that in a while. Anyway, squirrel, snow, snow. So, all right. Thank you so much for being here. I appreciate all of you more than I can say. Thank you, Giles, over at, at Zhivago Perfumes for sending me that beautiful perfume. And, um, yay. So... All right, don't forget to like and subscribe and ding the bell and comment if you want. If you don't, it's all good. I still love you. Use your own nose. Happy Halloween and happy October. Peace.